Hey guys, and welcome to Really Seriously For Real. It was I was a bit critical of the last episode, but this one more than made up for it. I knew we were in trouble when they started hacking into the cask of Creme de Month. Let's go. So Outlander gave us another cold open, letting us see what happened from Jamie's point of view as he sat waiting for Claire on Artemis. I like how he was sharpening his blade like, you better bring my wife back. <laughs> but instead, as Fergus shows Jamie the fresh smelling herbs he acquired from Marsley, what a gent, he notices the porpoise sails coming down. Jamie grabs a telescope and notices Claire is still on the ship. Jamie springs into action, yelling for the crew to chase it down. But just then, Captain Rains tells his crew to stand down. Rains already knew that the porpoise would be leaving with Claire, but notes that they'll all meet up in Jamaica. Jamie, he didn't like that too much, and he found himself thrown into the brig, and apparently without the aid of Mr. Willoughby's acupuncture, as he was headfirst in the bucket again but well enough to plot. He asked Fergus to steal the keys to his jail and break him out of there whilst acquiring the help from their other friends and maybe persuade some of the crew. Jamie even promises his blessing for Fergus and Marsley's union. Fergus knew it was a fool's errand and he spoke to Marsley as she tended to his hand. Jamie's blessing, it was a tempting offer, but still risky. Later, Fergus scoped out the possibility anyhow, and after eavesdropping, he hears the crew telling Captain Rains that they could simply throw Jamie overboard and be done with it, citing how much bad luck they had since Jamie's team had been aboard. They even note that they can simply take advantage of Marsley once she is without any protection. Thankfully, Captain Rains dismisses the idea, lightly though. Fergus reports to Jamie that he's unwilling to carry out Jamie's plan as there was too much at stake and leaves him to marinate in that a little bit. Ultimately, it was Marsali who saved the day by convincing the captain to let Jamie out so he could at least help out on the ship. And according to Captain Rains, they need all the help that they can get from every man on board. But he did so and would do so based on Jamie's word. Jamie's word is better than gold. Marsley told Jamie that he didn't even see what Fergus truly did for him. Fergus saved his life, which will allow him to fight another day for Claire, not as fish food. Jamie gives his blessing for their union, and it's happily ever after on board the Artemis, for now. We pick up with Claire on the British ship, barely a full day on board and she has them swabbing the decks and cleaning house so she can start trying to save lives. Mr. Pound, as far as I was concerned, was the MVP of the episode, right by Claire's side reinforcing the captain's orders to anyone who slighted our hero. His name was Elias, 14 years old. His uncle was a Navy captain, so he's been at sea since seven. He joined the porpoise only for this voyage. Thankfully, he was also a quick study. Elias states the porpoise picked up two men from Edinburgh, jailed for illegally selling liquor. Elias suggests maybe they could s distill pure alcohol from rum that Claire would need in order to help keep everything sanitized. When asked by Mr. Overhaul, wherever he came from, how many casks of alcohol she needed, her response, well, how many men do you want to save? Good question. Claire knew it was a race to save lives and realized she needed to pinpoint where the original outbreak occurred and see if the problem is still there. And after speaking with the captain and reviewing the late medic's logs, she realized that the outbreak started where the carpenters were and only one survived out of that group and he was now in the kitchen. Claire surmised that he must still be sick even if he's not showing signs but he's passing the illness through the food. The captain removed the man from the kitchen, which left the grumpy cook none too happy. 
Claire is pretty good at making enemies. What's one more? He even stalked her as she attempted to seek solace above deck, citing there had been no improvement in the sailors and more continue to get ill. Mr. Pound sent the cook on his way and he and Claire were able to chat a bit about how she is able to handle this situation and all this death. She says, you need to separate certain areas of your life in order to work effectively. But sometimes it just comes down to plain and simple luck. Mr. Pound then offers his lucky rabbit's foot to Claire, which he received from his mother who was no longer living. A previous scene showed Mr. Pound's own friend had passed away and he demonstrated how after the body is prepared, the last stitch is done by a close friend through the nose to ensure the person is deceased. You kind of know that this tradition may be revisited before this episode was over, including that of a sea burial as well, which was very well done. Claire meets Mrs. Johansson below deck after her husband passes out. Thinking it was a sickness, Claire rushed to aid until she saw the nearly empty bottle of alcohol. And then she went into a cursing tirade because she's trying to save lives and he's drinking her pure alcohol till he was nearly dead. If you ever heard the expression, she cursed worse than a sailor, well then there you go. When Claire apologized for her mouth, Elias, he remarked how he had heard it before, just never from a gentlewoman. Well, they never met Claire. <laughs> Claire thanked Mrs. Johansson for the work that she had done with taking care of the goats and said her husband will be fine. As she was leaving, Claire noticed that there was a Portuguese flag draped over some cargo. Claire went to Captain Leonard's office, but he wasn't there. So she started to look through his log, hoping to find some information on the ship that took young Ian. That wasn't the ship, but Claire did stumble on a log stating a man named Harry Tompkins recognized Jamie Frazier and that he was traveling under a different name. Never a dull moment. <laughs> but then Grumpy Cook comes in catching Claire and does his grumpiest sighting. He's in there to fetch something for the captain. What about you? Ultimately, Claire tells him that she'll just tell the captain that he tried to take advantage of her, and then he finally backed off. The next day, Claire casually tells a very tired Mr. Pound that he was looking for Harry Tompkins and that he was another carrier of the disease, but to keep it quiet. When they locate him, they bring him in and Claire orders Mr. Pound to get some sleep. The man is none other than our one-eyed man who was sent to find the illegal liquor back in Edinburgh. Claire immediately threatens him, but he tells her, go ahead, I've had a horrible month. His face was burnt by hot lead by young Ian. He was pressed into service by the porpoise and is now on a diseased ship. Yeah, he was like, death, death is better. Claire had him jailed, lying and saying that he was just another carrier, but not before he told her that Jamie was wanted for sedition and murder. Yes, murder. <laughs> yeah, guess what they found in those barrels of creme de month? Captain Leonard planned to use her as bait in order to capture Jamie. Claire tells a story to Mrs. Johansson when she had asked in her sweet broken English, and she tells Claire that she could help and that her goats need grass. Claire figured she didn't understand what she was talking about and thanked her and began to tend to the sick, who didn't sound sick anymore. In fact, they were quiet and peaceful and comfortable. When she went to find Mr. Pound to give him his lucky rabbit's foot, unfortunately, she found him near death. Mr. Elias Pound, had the disease and would succumb to it. It would be Claire to put the last stitch in and one last burial at sea. But they needed to still care for the sick. So Mrs. Johansson told Claire that since her goats need grass, then they can go off the ship at an approaching island. That way they can get the much needed water as well for the sick. And Mrs. Johansson would simply help her escape. 
Too bad the captain isn't foolish. He comes right out and tells Claire that he simply can't let her go so that way she can warn her husband. You know the captain is doing the right thing and he feels bad, especially with all the good work that Claire has done for him and the ship. Claire asks him if he could just look the other way. Instead, that night, a very persistent Mrs. Johansson tells Claire that she'll need to jump off the boat and float with the current to the distant island. Jesus H. Roosevelt Christ. She's going for it. This was no doubt a great episode. Lots going on and I thought well balanced overall. Again, hats off to our MVP, Mr. Pound, and our persistent Mrs. Johansson. And hopefully Mr. Tompkins can stave off the illness from the true carrier. So, what do you think? How do you think Claire is going to get back to Jamie? The coming attractions look like it's going to be a bit difficult stretch for her. Comment down below. If you like this video and want to see more Outlander content, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell so you're always notified when I upload a video. Thanks for watching. Until next time guys.